Hello, hello. <laughs> um, so, yes, <laughs> I suppose my name is Jared. I don't know whether I've been introduced a few times and been said that I'm around the corner, I suppose. But um, yeah, I, I, I guess I wanted to speak to the graduating class today to, uh, to kind of share some, some wisdom from uh, down the path, I guess, and talk to you about three important kind of topics, I guess. One is about opportunities, resilience, and gratefulness. So um, first off, I guess opportunities, right? Life, from what I've realized in my short time on this earth, life is, is about the choices you make. And uh, it can feel as if, you know, whether you choose, have chosen to go on to study at university, whether you've chosen to go on to a job or pursue a passion project, it can feel like a narrowing of your world because you've gone from so many to so few choices. And I just want to tell you that in my experience, the next chapter of your life is where you can really broaden those opportunities because you can start to pursue some of those interests. And although I guess when you, when you do, when you're at school, you do decide to stray away from things that you're not as good at and you, know, you didn't do as well in that exam or that essay. And so you, although you like the subject, you tend to stray away from it. And what I would say is, if you like something, you should really go after it as an interest, as a passion, as, a, as any kind of project. And I think um, if, if you don't know what you're interested in, look at what you spend your time doing. If you what, read, watch videos, if, if that's what you're really in, like, into or curious about, why are you curious about it? What about it energizes you? And I think that's one way that you can really go down. I mean, even if it's just conversations with your friends, look at the conversations that you're interested in and see what energizes you about them. And, um, and I think you'd be surprised at how the conversations with your friends can influence your future. I mean, as an example, um, so I spent over half of my life at BISJ, or Conti as I called it, and uh, a lot of my friends were from a spectrum of Arabic-speaking countries, from Sudan, Lebanon, uh, Palestine, Saudi Arabia, and they, they all used to make fun of each other's accents all the time, you know, whether it was like a... Shu badak ya zalame badak boza? Or whether it was a... Or whether it was like a... Shinohada la manava? Or whether it was like a... Ishtabgha yani muthar lejet? You know, it was, it was, there was a lot of kind of mocking going about. And uh, after I left Saudi Arabia about 11 years ago, I went on to university to study Arabic and Middle Eastern politics. And then after that, I went on to do Arabic linguistics, focusing on the differences between Arabic dialects and how people actually, um, different dialects mock each other. And I didn't realize that my experiences at this very school had influenced my life in ways I couldn't have even imagined. I mean, Going, influencing my, my, my career, my interest in academic writing and um, whatnot. And so I really have to thank the, the, the great humor of the Arab world in many ways and the Arabic speakers. So I, I suppose the opportunities lead you down the interesting paths. When it comes to resilience, um, so I suppose I should give you a bit of background about myself. Um, if you haven't heard from others, I arrived uh, with my family uh, in 1997. My parents like to remind me that I arrived on Jeddah tarmac in my dad's arms at just 20 months old. I had my second birthday in the old Conti, as it was called. It's now called Jeddah Prep. And um, my parents, who you, some of you may know, were teachers at the school. And because of that, I lived within the wider walls of the school. So in many ways, you know, I, I, I couldn't be prouder to call not just Jeddah, but the actual school, BISJ, my home. And uh, that's, that's a special feeling. Um, and so, you know, being at the school, myself, my, my, my brother Matthew, my sister Cara, we took full advantage of the opportunities that the school gave us, whether that was playing in football tournaments or swimming at the nationals or performing in drama productions, we really took um, full advantage. And um, we, ha we have a lot of people to thank for that. Um, and I suppose afterwards I went on to study at university, but unfortunately in my final year, I, um, my accident changed things. Uh, just six years ago, I was teaching in Sweden, and I 
dived into a lake that was uh, much shallower than I expected. I, I broke my neck and uh, I'm now tetraplegic with the inability to move my hands and legs. And um, speaking to the doctors, they did confirm that the accident was, uh, is, is complete. And so that means that there is no chance that I will regain that mobility. And I suppose it was a few days after my accident, I thought to myself that there is no point in getting angry or depressed or, or feeling down about the situation because it would only take me backwards and it wouldn't let me get anywhere. And I could never progress and learn from this. I had to fully accept my condition and my situation move forward. And um, that's tough, you know, you, you have to think about a lot of questions of what if, if only, but I had to really accept that and, and process that and, and move forward. Um, and I think that I, I, I learned a lot of lessons from my family, friends, and, and obviously my, my upbringing here taught me to be very, very positive, to look at it with a positive mindset. And I, th I think I just want to point out that when I, when I tell this story, what I'm not looking for in this situation is pity, to be looked down upon, for anyone to say, oh, your life is so much worse off because you're in a wheelchair. I think every single person has different limitations in their lives, whether it's physical, mental, emotional, financial. Every person struggles with something. And my disability has not stopped me from living a life I enjoy and really taking advantage of that, whether it's painting, playing sport, traveling abroad, learning new languages, studying at university, doing a master's degree. I, I think it's, you know, there's, there's so much to still, so many opportunities to still take in life. And I think that's really important. And you, you've got to focus on that inner resilience to, to take from that. Um, of course, there were lots of down times. Um, and I have a lot of people to thank for that. I'm very thankful for my, my friends and family, my support network in that sense. Um, what to say? Um, I know I, I, I must check my notes one second. <laughs> <laughs> So I, I think one important thing to, to note um, that I actually added in last minute was that a lot of people when it comes to disability talk about inspiration and for me to be inspirational. And I understand that. Let, let me be your inspiration, but let that be your individual internal inspiration. It shouldn't be a case of I'm doing this, but my life could be so much worse, I could be in a wheelchair. I think it's got to be something of, look, I'm struggling with something, but I know within myself that I have the inner resilience to overcome this. And I need to look at the situation, observe it, process it, and actually have the full belief that, that I can be resilient. And I think that that's really important. And you should also be extremely grateful for the things you do have in your life. And I can't state that enough. Um, and graduates. Um, <laughs> This is, this is a very significant moment in your lives. And, um, but you must remember, you didn't, you didn't get here alone. And I think I'd like for you to take whoever's here, graduates, if you could please be upstanding just for a quick moment. I think you should be very appreciative of your own support networks at this moment. I think you should take a moment actually to thank the people that have helped you get to where you are today. You know, I, I don't just mean your teachers, I mean your parents, siblings, drivers, maids, anyone that has supported you in your life to get to where you are right now, you should be so appreciative. So if you could please applaud the people that have been in your support, support network. Uh, I said, you guys can sit down now. I want to give you a <laughs> sit up. 
But I suppose at this moment, I, I would like to you know, uh, reflect upon that myself. I, I'm very thankful for a lot of people as well. Um, and ju just being here, you know, I think actually just after my accident, I had a visit from lots of different people from old Conti friends, um, you know, Ian Williams, Damas Lederbohr, Pat and Jay Walker. I don't think they're here today. Their daughter, Bella. Lots of people actually, in these kinds of moments, you see people in their, in their true light and their true colors come through. And I think I'm very appreciative of all the people that supported me along the way. And uh, Ian and Damas, thank you so much for making this dream come true and you know, for me to come home. <laughs> in my life. Graduates, I, I, will, I, will, I, will um, I will leave you with this. Uh, success in your life will come in many, many forms. And you will encounter many obstacles in your life that you could have never foreseen. And it is how you respond to those obstacles that defines your character. And just remember that you shouldn't view these setbacks as predicaments, but opportunities to learn and grow and remember that you have the inner resilience to overcome them and be grateful because you, your life will be so much better for it. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you.